just to prepare. But to, you know, Let's head back to Arlington, Texas to hear from Cincinnati head coach Luke Fickle at the podium. Let's listen in. It's finally coming to that point. And uh, I know our guys are excited. I know our guys have been preparing and thinking about this for quite a while and uh, are really, really excited about this challenge. So um, from all of us, you know, I, I think that uh, it's close to that talk being over and, and about time for us to, you know, go back out there and do what it is that we love to do. And uh, I think everybody in this program um, is really excited about uh, what's to come tomorrow. Coach, your first question is going to come from Bill Carroll. First of all, Coach, thank you so much for your time, and I wish you an early Happy New Year. Thanks, Bill. With the extra preparation time, what's been your approach to exotics or trick plays? I know it can be tempting when you have the extra time to one in certain How have you approached it? Well, I think that uh, try to find that balance. Um, you know, when you've got this much time, you start watching, you go from normally kind of breaking down six games, five games maybe, and, and some specific things to – all of a sudden looking at 12 and 13 games and then all of a sudden looking at some things from the year before and maybe even, you know, some things from where guys have been in the past and, and uh, it can kind of bog you down. And really for us, we got to do a really good job at not giving our guys too much. And I think, uh, you know, so for us, you know, I'm not saying they're a trick team. You obviously always throw in here, things here and there and try to, you know, anticipate what might it be. Um, but uh, for us, we try to kind of stick with the, the plan that we've done all year and not go too much into it and give them too many different things and uh, too many different expectations. It really comes down to the adjustments that you're going to have to make. We all know there's going to be something different offensively and defensively that we're going to see. And uh, our ability to make some of those adjustments after the first, you know, drive or two, or even in the, at halftime um, to us is a bigger deal than trying to give them everything and uh, trying to assume different things that you're going to see. What's your next question is going to come from Mitch Lucas. Mitch, go ahead with your question. All right, we're going to keep moving. Next question is going to come from Justin Williams from The Athletic. Hey, Coach. Uh, I realize you're obviously focused on on the game in the moment, but have you gotten a sense over the past couple of weeks, maybe from being around people like Wid and Gino and Bins, like what all of this means to the program from a historical perspective? No, I, I, I have not. Um, you know, I, I don't know that, uh, as you know me well enough, that uh, it's not something I spend a lot of time doing and probably something um, that I need to, you know, take a better look at. Um, but I think when it's all said and done, we'll have the opportunity to kind of look back at it and, and recognize the things that, uh, you know, that it has done and will continue to do for the program. And, um, you know, we're never about, you know, completely understanding the study in the past. We're always about continuing to move forward. But um, if we don't understand where we're coming from, then it's hard to appreciate where it is that we are. And I understand that much about it. Um, but, uh, Maybe at some point in time, I'll be able to sit down with those guys and, and get a little bit more insight here after the next few weeks, hopefully. Coach, your next question is coming from Carrie Osep from WVTM-TV. Good morning, Coach. Thanks for taking the time. Carrie Osep here. I asked Coach Saban this, and I'm curious from your perspective, you know, getting a chance to get into these playoffs. He's obviously been here before, but from a coach's perspective as well, what have you learned from your guys as they get ready for this first time experience in the playoff that maybe you haven't seen from them with all this prep time before the game? Well, I think that, uh, you know, we've been, last year was different. We didn't have nearly as much prep time for, you know, the, the, the peach bowl against Georgia, just because the season was pushed back so much. So we've been fortunate at least to, you know, not be in the playoffs, but be in the bowl games where we've done different prep. This has definitely been different. You know, I think our prep for, you know, the past bowl game, with the exception of the last year, was, you know, a bit different, um, you know, just to how things were going and how we were leading up and how we were using the time, you know, and a lot of development of young guys. But uh, I think I can't say it's been a whole lot different, to be honest with you. We've, we've been very fortunate this year to have, uh, you know, 30-some seniors that give us that maturity and give us that sense of uh, being like pros that I think they've really handled this um, in the best way, you know, understanding that, you know, we've kind of done this thing in three phases, um, phase one, phase two, and phase three, and didn't want to get into real game prep, which is that phase three too soon. 
so we were able to kind of, you know, try to get their guys' minds to not overdo it early in the, in the preparation about, you know, what we're going to see, you know, come Friday night or Friday afternoon. Um, but really kind of, you know, these last few days really kind of get into that last phase prep. So our guys have been really mature about it, been pros about it. But uh, I think they're you're kind of seeing that from yesterday. I saw yesterday that just they're a little bit antsy now and really, really excited and ready to uh, to get this thing rolling tomorrow. Coach, your next question is going to come from Gary Miller. Morning, Coach. Uh, what significance do you think it has that the best all-around game that you guys played is against the best team you've played so far in Notre Dame? And what relevance does it have going into this challenge? Well, I, I just think that, uh, you know, our guys are competitors. And, you know, I think we, we talk about our quarterback in particular a lot of times, at least I do. And uh, the greatest attribute that he has is his competitive spirit. And, you know, at the biggest moments, he plays his best. And, uh, you know, so that's what we've got to expect. And, you know, so we've been, we've been on some of those stages. I'm not saying we've been, you know, in a Cotton Bowl stage like this in the playoffs. But, you know, playing at Notre Dame this year, I think, was, was big for us at, at uh, you know, handling, you know, just all the hype around it. And, you know, even the environment, and the atmosphere and, and going into – to that game. Um, so I think that our ability to kind of handle that and grow through that, um, through some of the other things that, you know, the, the ups and the downs that we had kind of in that middle part of the season, just happened to handle some expectations and, you know, happened to handle not playing quite the, you know, maybe up to the standard of what not only we thought, but obviously people outside us thought. Um, so a lot of those things I think are a build up for where we are today. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to draw upon all those things to, you know, to help us here uh, tomorrow afternoon. All right, Cincinnati head coach Luke Fickle there talking about the buildup to this moment of reaching this stage. Uh, Dennis, kind of put in perspective, for those who maybe not have been following Cincinnati since the season started, getting to this point, what have you noticed about the Bearcats getting to the stage? I think they're ready for this moment. I mean, let's not forget the bowl game last year against Georgia. Now, people can poo-poo that and say Georgia wasn't ready because they weren't playing for a championship. They played Georgia toe-to-toe, -to -toe, physically, right down to the gun, uh, lost on a field goal. So they've been here before. Uh, the two road games against Power 5 teams, I know Indiana wasn't very good this year, but they scheduled those games, and they won those, and that impressed the committee. They handled Notre Dame, who ended up, what, fifth? I think top five team. That had to resonate. They've been on this stage before. My question for Cincinnati is, okay, having said all that, part of Alabama's uh, – superiority is they have teams beat before they even get on the field. I, I know Cincinnati, I know what they're going to say, but when it actually comes out there in front of the big lights, you know, is that going to be the case? I suspect it won't be. I already told you about how talented Alabama is, but I think they'll hang in. And I think they'll hang in for a long time because they've got, they've, they've been calling themselves the most experienced defense in the country at various times this season. Nine seniors, we talk about Ahmad Gardner, Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant switching to Kobe Bryant's number eight for this game, whatever that means. Um, but nine seniors, three six-year seniors, three five-year seniors, and three four-year seniors. So I think that kind of answers a question, at least on that side of the ball. Will they be dazzled by those Oklahoma crimson and cream or crimson and white jerseys? Um, these seniors have been through a lot, and they've been through a lot with Luke Fickle. Yep, they've got Desmond Ritter, of course, uh, slinging it around for them. And, of course, the COVID-shortened season last year, didn't have the P5 schedule, but before that in 19 had at UCLA, which they won at the Rose Bowl. Ohio State certainly didn't go their way, but obviously building to where they are now with the 30 or so seniors. My question to you actually, Dennis, is big picture on this team and whether they'll be ready for Bama. But just off the top of my head, I'm thinking UCF. I'm thinking maybe even Tom Herman's Houston team and those Boise teams. Where would you rank Cincinnati in terms of the caliber? Are they the best team to get to this point? Historically, they're here. But among their peers, what do you think? They are because, uh, you know, those Tom Herman Houston teams didn't fulfill their destiny. All the hype going into, I think, the 15 season, they lost four games. They went nine and four. You know, they beat Florida State in the bowl game to end the season, then beat Oklahoma in the beginning of the season to start, but they lost four games that season. Uh, UCF went 13 and 0, but didn't have the schedule. If we're going to talk about that, you know, we can talk about the players that came off that team and maybe played in the NFL. But they can't compare to the schedule and what Cincinnati has done. And I would say starting with the Georgia game last year. They proved that they belong here. Um, that first week, remember they were seventh in the CFP? We just wrote them off for whatever. The committee didn't respect them. Things changed. They were the only team you could put in there. So, I'd, yeah, absolutely, they're the best 
group of five team in this era. When we look at the schedule course here, they're 13 and 0 getting to this point and, and Luke Fickle of course mentioned to it, this is different offensively and defensively experience we haven't had this year, even dated back to last year, but you look at some of those games against Tulsa, maybe Navy, they were close. What needs to happen to make sure they're not put back in that position? Well, there were two games. There were Tulsa and Navy. Navy's hard to play because of the option. I can't, I can't explain Tulsa. They almost fumbled the ball away uh, inside their own five at the end of the game and then had to make a goal line stand. I think with this, having this much time to prepare for the biggest game in Cincinnati history, you're not going to see them lay an egg. I could be wrong. I mean, Georgia, Georgia was by far the best team in the country in the second half and lost by 17 points. Cincinnati, I think, is going to be within the number. Okay, that's what I was going to follow right. with because we haven't got a pick yet. You think 13 and a half could get to 14 by kickoff. You think Cincinnati will keep it and make it a game? I think it's too much because of what I just mentioned. The seniors on defense, the playmaking ability of Desmond Ritter, whose force of nature is not going to allow this team to get blown out, at least it is offensively, that he has a chance. And Luke Fickle, I want Luke Fickle looking after my money. I would buy a car from Luke Fickle. I think he's the gold standard among coaches right or among coaches right now. Look at the jobs he could have had. USC, LSU, all the all the jobs we know came after Luke Fickle. He stayed at a school that has been a power five school, now a group of five school, now going into the Big Twelve, or it may be a power five school again. We don't see that, but that's where he's most comfortable. And this could be the next annual power in college football. All right, Cincinnati certainly building themselves to that point. We know the AAC over the last few years, very comparable to the Power Five conferences. Dennis, certainly appreciate it. And again, another reminder about the Cover 3 podcast, Bud Elliott, Tom Fornelli, Chip Patterson, and Danny Cannell. The guys will have you covered. They've been doing daily bowl game previews, picks against the spread, and of course, they'll have you covered as we prepare for Friday in the college.